This is just a little video to answer the question, why is sterling silver used instead of pure silver? And right here I have two pieces. This one is sterling silver. And if I zoom in, you should be able to see the marking here. Sterling. There we go. This is a uh, julep cup, mint julep cup for fancy people who are uh, at the Kentucky Derby to drink uh, juleps out of. This particular one is made out of 92.5% silver. The rest of the metal content, uh, probably being copper, sometimes other uh, metals are used, but effectively, this is not pure silver. This is only 92.5% silver. Uh, this piece, on the other hand, is actually pure silver. And let's see if we can zoom in and see the mark there. Yeah, right there, pure silver. And I verified this is in fact pure silver. The little CPO mark that you see there is actually the uh, central purchasing office. And what this particular piece is, was a uh, little, uh, little booze cup of some variety that was made uh, in occupied Japan. So after the war, the uh, people of Japan weren't really doing that great. Money was pretty hard to come by. And if you were a, an artisan who could make something like this, but couldn't get the materials, you could go and actually talk to the um, central purchasing office uh, for the, the army or the, the, the American government, and they could get you materials, uh, which you could then make things out of, and then they would sell. So this is effectively part of a set. I've got four of these that were sold probably to some officer or uh, some GI who wanted something fancy. Now, I believe that the reason this is made out of pure silver and not sterling, as one normally would make, is because there was probably a bit of a language issue when uh, the uh, CPO person uh, was asked for silver. And the idea that you would get sterling silver as opposed to pure silver got lost. So here we have a, a very unusual uh, thing in that this is a... Uh, functional object. This is a, a cup that is used, but it's made out of pure silver. Now, if I put it down here, you can see how it wobbles. The reason is because it is pure silver, even though it's it's fairly thick. I mean, if you can see the, the little wobble there, and I can actually try to bend it back just with my fingers. And every time I do that, I, I, I tend to make it a little worse. I need to actually do this the right way, maybe in this regard. I'm not sure. I haven't actually gone through any classes for uh, silversmithing yet to figure out how to fix this, so I try not to do that. But you can see how easy it was for me to bend that. Whereas with sterling, like if I actually try, it might flex a touch, but it goes back into shape. And it's, it's effectively about the same, uh, the same thickness, although this does have a little rim. But it is basically the same thickness, although this is significantly stronger. And the reason that we use sterling silver is because it is significantly stronger. And if you're actually going to use a, a, an object, uh, you're going to want it to be stronger and more durable. And alloying the silver with another metal makes it more durable. And that's why most things that we use and have used for um, hundreds upon hundreds of years are made out of alloyed silver of some variety. Most of it um, in America or Britain or the Commonwealth is sterling, but um, at other times it has been a, a smaller amount. Uh, in continental Europe, 75% um, silver was common. In the Scandinavian countries, 83% silver was very common. In fact, it was a standard at one time. But we can talk about that more in other videos if people are interested. Uh, I think I'm supposed to ask you to like and subscribe. I know that will help me to actually make this channel grow. And if you like this content, um, I I'd appreciate it. I hope you have a great day.